to play in this strategy over the last um, the last well six years of the program, but particularly over the last six months. Um, thank you very much for all of your hard work and for all of the support that you've given to us in developing the strategy and the ideas and the enthusiasm that you've had uh, has certainly come across. Um, so for those of you who are perhaps a bit new to NSTEP, we were launched in 2016 um, as a collaboration of Quality and Qualifications Ireland, the Higher Education Authority and the Union of Students in Ireland. Um, and this strategy is really a culmination of six years of work, but also, um, I suppose, sets out a three-year vision for what we can do to build on that work to date. Um, so our previous strategy um, from 2019 to 2021, which I'm not, I'm not going to take you through today, but we've, we've, I th hopefully we'll get a bit of discussion about it later on. Um, we asked um, students and staff all across the sector in terms of student engagement and decision making, student staff partnership, um, elevating the student voice and building collaborative relationships between students and staff. You know, how did NSTEP do? Um, what has the impact of the program been? Have we had a positive impact on higher education and the way in which students can have their say and be a part of decision making? And the answer that came back and, and the real clear answer that came back was that, yes, we've had a positive and valued impact um, in the sector. And we have been a catalyst for change as a program, um, particularly because of that collaboration. Um, it's not just about NSEP. NSEP is about all of our participating institutions, student unions, student representatives, um, and staff across all roles who've played a part. But I suppose what people wanted to see more of was we strengthen the role of NSTEP in policy and practice so that student engagement, which has become uh, a huge theme throughout higher education policy and practice, that actually we embed that and build on that and grow it further. Because as Megan says, there's a lot of inviting to the table, but it's about what happens at that table, the collaboration that happens at that table that's really key for us. And I suppose the pandemic featured quite a lot in our discussions. Um, there's been lots of good things that came from the pandemic, but also lots of things that I think we need to reflect on um, uh, and, and build on things that weren't so good. So I suppose we need to harness the lessons that we've learned from the pandemic um, so that student engagement is authentic and meaningful uh, and genuine and that there's that relationship of trust there. We have our framework, Steps to Partnership, and I think Steps to Partnership came across um, from students and staff that we've created a really interesting and useful and innovative best practice that's internationally recognized, but we need to embed that. Um, what do steps to partnership mean for people? How do they build partnership? And how do we do that through higher education? So I suppose by supporting more sharing of good practice um, and building relationships between students and staff that is genuinely co-creative, that's going to be really important for us. So we have three new strategic priorities at NSEP going forward. And the first one is to strengthen the value of student engagement at the national level. The second is to continue to develop the leadership capabilities of students in Irish higher education, recognizing the work that we've done through our student training program. And the third um, is really focused on supporting staff, particularly to build meaningful partnership with students. And that was something that really came across is that we built a, a a very large suite of activities for student training and development so we can mirror that for staff now going forward. So the three main things that we'd like to do under strategic priority A is to embed our steps to partnership framework throughout national policy and to use that to facilitate good practice uh, and the development of new practices in student engagement and particularly to expand our networks. We work with 28 institutions and student unions currently um, so we want to expand those networks and create more sharing of practice uh, and bring to you more opportunities to develop your student engagement initiatives. Uh, in terms of strategic priority B, which is all about student development, um, we want to increase participation in our student training program. We have a huge suite of opportunities there, so we want to reach broad, diverse audiences. We want to particularly enhance the role of student representatives uh, throughout policy making and really build their influence in policy and to develop collaborative staff student projects. Uh, we've a lot of practice in this area and we want to build on the lessons that we've learned from that. And then a strategic priority C, which is, is quite new for us, we want to build that dedicated suite of opportunities for staff professional development and that staff wherever they are and whoever they are 
to build more sharing of resources to give practice, to utilize the resource hubs that we have and to utilize the knowledge and the expertise that students and staff have across the sector, and particularly to support institutional senior leadership to really action student engagement within their institutions. So that's where we are. That's our future in a nutshell, um, probably a bit of a whistle stop and hopefully I've explained myself, but the strategy which will be going in the chat soon i'm going out across all of our social media and our website hopefully you'll have a chance to delve into that to get to grips with it and to see genuinely that the work that you've done to support end step over the last number of years is reflected in this strategy uh, and uh, we we really do believe that student engagement in irish higher education is in a good place and we want to build on that in the coming three years so i'll hand it back to megan um, thanks very much folks Thanks so much, Oshin, and a huge congratulations. Um, it's no easy feat putting together um, something like this, but I have to say it's been really, it must have been really enjoyable to take the time to reflect back on all of the successes um, of the last few years in particular. And I know it's referenced explicitly in the strategy um, that NSTEP has been a huge catalyst for the entire sector, and there's been huge changes over a remarkably short period of time. So if I could throw it back onto you, um, know why and how the program has been such a huge catalyst for change um obviously there's that big focus on the national collaboration and the national partnership and mm. that was really important because it created a national vision but i i think where where it's worked well is that ground up approach um we work i, I suppose that our biggest audience the people we work with is our biggest audience are the class reps there's thousands of them all across the country and that's a ground up approach so that's program level and that's program level change. And I think building on that now, you know, connecting the national, the institutional and the program level is really important for us. Yeah. So I, th I think that's why the staff piece came through so strongly is to build that program level ground up, um, I suppose, champion, champions of student engagement. Brilliant. And I guess then, where, where do we go from here? So when this strategy is complete, when we're sitting here um, in, in 2025, what are you hoping that that area will look like? Um, I think the sharing of good practice is really important for people to have a think about today, particularly. Um, there's a huge amount of good practice uh, out in, in the sector. There's a huge amount of work out there. It's been difficult for us to capture that at times and to understand that because we are sitting at the national level where, you know, we're not connecting to all of the broad audiences and diverse diversity across the sector. And I think building an understanding all of the practice that's going on out there, I think that's really important for the next three years because the policy making piece can't happen without knowledge of how people are working and their experiences and the challenges they face and also the successes that they're having. So I think that piece is going to be really important for us and we're, we're, we'll come back to it later on, but we're currently looking for case studies. So um, Rhiannon's smiling at me because she, she's currently looking for case studies, but I think that's something that we need, we need to build on. And, and in three years time, understanding what people are doing in the sector better is going to be important for us. Brilliant. Well, thank you so, so much. And congratulations again um, on what I think is a, is a really wonderful strategy. Um, so next, we are going to move on to a panel discussion. Um, we are joined by Karina McGuire, who is the Head of Partnerships at Quality and Qualifications Ireland and has been a member of the NSTEP Steering Committee since the programme was founded in 2016. Uh, Dr Vivian Patterson is the Head of Skills and Engagement at the Higher Education Authority and is also a member of the NSTEP Steering Committee. And we also have Vanna Pessa, who is a law student of Maynooth University. She's Belgian born, Irish Canadian of Cameroon descent. Uh, Vanna has been an NSTEP student trainer since 2019, as well as being a QA reviewer, a co-chair of the project team that developed the Steps to Partnership Framework and is currently the NSTEP student associate for EDI. Um, and last, um, not last but not least, I'm skipping, getting ahead of myself. We have Brenda uh, Mira Azevedo, uh, who's originally from Brazil. She's a master's marketing student at, at the National College of Ireland. Um, Brenda was, had completed her undergrad at NCI and is currently a student quality assurance reviewer and a member of QQI's new student and learner engagement working group. And last but not least, we have Leo Farrell, who has worked in the higher education um, sector for the last 20 years. He's driven a number of projects at a sectoral level, sectoral level initiative with the National Forum for Enhancement of Teaching and Learning and encompassing the areas of learning analytics, student success, and is currently the student record manager with UCD Registry. So welcome everyone. I hope you are keeping well and having a good morning. Um, and I might just kick off straight away and I might start with yourself, Ivana, 
um, in asking what aspect of this new strategy caught your attention, your imagination, and why? Um, it's always really difficult to answer questions where they're asking for one particular aspect. So I'm going to slightly bend your question to give you two, and I hope that's okay. Um, so the first aspect, I think I'm giving you two because I think they're equally, um, you know, they're, they equally struck me. And I think it's, it's pretty, a pretty good um, um, aspect of the, the strategy. So the first part I have to say is seeing like tangible metrics. For example, um, under strategic priority B, um, there's the objective to increase participation in student, uh, sorry, increase participation for training, the various training that we hold, and we want to do that by 10% annually. And I feel that throughout the new strategy, there's much more like tangible numeric objectives, which I feel is much stronger and it really gives us the push to achieve those things. Um, and secondly, I really like the fact that we are looking to um, implement the steps to partnership framework at a national level. I think there was a lot of work put into that. Um, I was, uh, I, I played a part in it and there are so many other people that helped shape that framework and to see that body of work and um, collaboration being applied in policy and taken to the next level, I think is brilliant. So those are my, definitely my, my two most important parts for me, um, from a, especially from a student perspective. Fantastic. Um, Brenda, what about yourself? Um, hi everyone, good morning. What I really liked about the new strategy is kind of empowering institutions and students. I think Step has done an amazing job in really empowering students generally with the training as a class rep and being a Q, QI panel reviewer. I have I have to say they have done a brilliant job and I think exploring a new field of uh, reaching partners in the institutional level. I think this is a huge strategy and well done for you guys to reach that and cause real change. I think this is brilliant, you know, as a, I have been participating as well in the QQI uh, project of trying to engage students and kind of meaningful create this partnership between institutions and student. And as a minority group, I would say this is fantastic. So well done, guys. I liked that part. <laughs> Fantastic. And um, Lee? Sorry, sorry about that. I'll be the technological expert. <laughs> um, yeah, so first of all, uh, just to say, like, it's it's an awesome piece of work and very, very, very exciting for, for the future and very important to recognise how much work has already uh, kind of gone in up till now and how much has been achieved. Um, I suppose maybe unsurprisingly, as a member of university staff, one piece that jumped out at me was the the uh, program development for uh, staff, which I think is really, really critical. I think a lot of what you guys are trying to achieve is around kind of culture change um, and, and really to to enable that. Um, you know, you, you, you take a staff member on a course for half a day um, and, you know, this, this half a day, but the change in mindset lasts for a lifetime and the more people whose mindsets change you start to see genuine cultural change and i suppose like we've seen that kind of over time as well you know i mean as, as you said I, i've been kind of working in, in in ucd since cardinal newman was a boy and you know when i started students were called students and then over time i saw students being called customers which you know, obviously throws up a lot of kind of negative connotations, but at least perhaps is a step in the right direction. From customers, then we went on to stakeholders, which again continues the, the path, but is, isn't quite there. It shows that students have a vested interest in the, the, the success of the institution and the success of their education. But to move, and actually I, I saw this uh, as, as recently as yesterday, um, I was in, involved in a discussion about a, a new strategy uh, kind of or a new policy around kind of student supports. And somebody suggested, well, you know, I mean, since this is kind of involving student supports, it really needs to be done in consultation with students. And there was broad agreement. And then somebody actually said, well, you know, since it affects students, maybe we should do it in partnership with with students. And that to go from students to customers to stakeholders to partners 
it shows a, a growing equity um, between staff, the institution itself and students, which is, is absolutely critical. And I, I congratulate you on all the work you've done in that direction so far. And I think the strategy absolutely is a, a, a further step towards that. So thank you very much. Thanks, Vivian. I think you've you've painted a wonderful picture there. Um, Vivian, I might I might ask you next, um, what were the parts of the, the strategy that really stood out to you? Thanks, Megan. And I just want to first start by saying congratulations to Oshin and his team on a fantastic strategy. Um, myself, Megan, and Karina have been and Laura have been with him along this journey, and it's been it's been a difficult task. But I think when you look at the strategy now and you see the impact and the milestones that are set out and that have been achieved over the course of the last strategy, it's really fantastic. And I think, you know, given, given the difficulty in terms of COVID over the period of the last strategy, what's been achieved is even, is even more amazing. And the importance, I think, of student engagement during that COVID um, pandemic um, was just, you know, really fantastic. And I think congratulations to Oshin and the team. For me, I think looking at the new strategy, um, as was already said, I think that that setting of, of metrics is really important to have something to base how we measure the impact going forward. In particular, I like, you know, the metrics that are there around the inclusion in, in the HE system performance framework, the inclusion of student engagement across higher education strategies and policies. And that's really important. And I think, you know, we're moving into a new era now, I think, in terms of HE landscape um, with the development of the technological universities, you know, we're coming out of the pandemic, the other side of it, but that is also bringing a number of challenges for students. Um, and I think, you know, we have a minister currently who is very engaged with the learner and is, is very keen on discussing um, policies and frameworks with the learner. So I think we have a fantastic opportunity as we go forward with this strategy. Um, and the current Department of Further and Higher Education and the Minister to really try and push this forward and embed it as much as possible. Um, and as Lee said, I think, you know, objective number three is hugely important this time around. I think we've we've made huge strides in terms of the learner and the student, but I think where we need to maybe you know, do a little bit more work is around the staff and engaging the staff to work directly with with the students to enhance even further that whole area of student engagement and leadership. So congratulations, Oshin, and, you know, we look forward to working with you over the next couple of years on this. Thanks so much, Vivian. And Brenda, I see your hands up, but I might just um, go to Karina um, as, our, as our last speaker on this uh, question, and I might come back to you then. So Karina, um, what, what is the, the big part of the strategy that stands out to you? Thanks, Megan. Um, again, I suppose not, not to repeat everything that Vivian has just said, it's, it has actually been a really exciting strategy. So this is a series of strategies we've had now, and I think this is certainly uh, the one where we've had an opportunity to really reflect on the impact uh, and achievements of NSTEP. And that has really been exciting. We're, we're obviously doing a lot of reflecting this year at QQI because we're 10 years in existence, which is hard to believe. It's also hard to believe how long NSTEP is going. But I think in the last two years, we are really, really seeing the impact of this program. We can see it coming up through the national policy. And no matter what grouping we go to, what committee or structure we're involved in, NSTEP is now, you know, a natural source of reference. It's it's actually had um, such an impact. I think I, I completely agree with what everyone has said already, but cultural change is one thing. Definitely it has had a cultural change. But I, I think actually we've achieved so much with this program beyond our expectations that we've actually now got some sort of reliance on it that that is more automatic than it would have been when it came out at first. So. So it's interesting ourselves how we how we perceive it. But look at um, this this particular strategy, I think is important because uh, for me the, the you know one of the main points is it values what we have achieved to date, and it's actually really really important to understand what we have achieved and to understand the value that that has created. We did see during COVID 
um, that any of the institutions that were staying connected with what was going on were already connected through student partnership schemes, particularly NSTEP. We saw that in every jurisdiction we went to outside Ireland, that was the evidence. So it's obviously really important, but I, but I do think it's, it's stepped the student platform up um, to a new level. And I really do agree with Lee and others in terms of bringing staff on board as well. To me, the staff piece is, is equally as important. But it's not just the programme itself. Um, I suppose it's important to remember that NSTEP keeps the agencies connected, not just to what's happening with students, but to actual student feedback, which is so important. We're involved in all sorts of policies and uh, we can all write in our own strategies that we're keeping. Uh, students at the at the center of any innovations or policies that we're developing, but actually that doesn't mean anything unless we're here engaging in the end step activities, supporting them, going to the network meetings, the steering group meetings, hearing firsthand from our students on the ground, because really that keeps us connected. Um, and I think Vivian would certainly agree with that. So yeah, for, for definite, um, this is the, the most impactful uh, strategy that we are going to have. We always have lots of work to do. It's an innovative program. It's it's staying connected to what needs to be taken on board. For example, with with a new academic integrity module. So it's not like it's it's in any way uh, staying still. It's also recognised as as a peer program internationally by Sparks, which is the only other program similar to it. Uh, so that's actually important too. So even international recognition gives us our, our, um, our value as well. So um, again, well done, not just to Oshin and the team. I, I know Oshin's played such a fantastic leadership role in all of this, but to everybody on the call and thanks as well to those who've come along and taken the time out today to showcase their uh, lovely case studies of impact in this area, because it's no good anyone doing any of this work unless it's shared. And, and that's another important part to think of this particular uh, strategy. Thank you so much, Karina. And I have to um, agree as well on that point you made on international recognition. There's nothing I love more than bragging about the work of NSTEP abroad with, with our partners across the European uh, Students' Union. It really is. I think it's it's a programme that I'm incredibly proud to, to play a part of. And I think um, we have fostered a, a space where everyone is very welcome, even as a, as a student representative when I first got involved. Um, and I think that that is something that... Um, we've really held true to. And I think that this strategy is reflective of it. So I think um, we've all kind of spoken to the things that we really like. Um, but of course, each of um, you are key stakeholders in this strategy in different ways. So um, if I might just open it up um, to all of you, feel free to, to come in. Um, what do you think your role is in this strategy? What is your importance in its implementation? And how do we make sure that we achieve these goals that we're saying are fantastic and, and, the, and the metrics that we've spoken about? Well, I might come in there, Megan, if that's okay. Mm -hmm. um, so I suppose the HEA is a, is a partner um, along with USI and QQI on, on NSTEP, but I think what the role for the HEA this year and the importance of the HEA is the publication of our new legislation, hopefully later this year. And I think the makeup of our new legislation is a testament to how, how impactful NSTEP has been because it is now, student engagement is now clearly called out within our new legislation. And that puts the importance of student engagement really high up in terms of the Higher Education Authority. Um, and, you know, our role to work with Oshin now and to work with the students and the staff is to, you know, through NSTEP report to our board, you know, what, what is happening and what the achievements are and how we're meeting our metrics in terms of this new strategy. But what's really great about the strategy is that we have a solid body of work that we can talk about, you know, to the sector when we bring them in for their strategic dialogue meetings. The same with Green and QQI when they bring them, them in for their strategic meetings. And it gives us something to focus on and to actually discuss with them to ask them where they are in terms of some of the metrics and what their engagement has been with the program in terms of um, staff, but I think in terms of senior management. 
Um, and, you know, our role will be to ensure that student engagement is reflected right across a higher education institution in every aspect of their delivery and their work. Um, and we can do that by referencing the NSTEP strategy and by including the metrics in all of our discussions. So I think that's an important role for the HEA. You're on mute, Megan. Fantastic, thanks, Vivian. You think we'd be used to it by now? Um, I might open it up to everyone else. Feel free to to come in. I don't want to be picking on you. I I can I can jump in and the student perspective how we would be able to contribute. I think many times you probably you guys know um, that a student sometimes jump and just voice their side, saying like, "Oh, I want this and I want that and I want this change," and you have to bring all this change. But I think um, as this new partnership would be about contribution together and collaborating and empathizing with the institution. I think sometimes that was what would lack in a, a class representative or an a, voice, a student voice that we don't really sometimes put ourselves in the institution place, that there are some limitations and resources that they are not usually capable to provide what you want. They would try your, their best. And uh, I think in a way of finding common ground between both voices. I think it's opening a conversation. And this is fantastic because I think that didn't have before and, and staff realized there is a need, there needs to have a conversation between both parties. So I think as a student, it's kind of come to the table and hear the other side. And I think that that would be great um, from a student perspective, I think. Yeah, absolutely. And I can say that for, for my own experience, it's it's a it's a learning curve. And the minute I think you can really understand where the institution is coming from, the work that you're doing yourself is far more effective um, and, and easier, ultimately, I think, on the student that wants to see that change. Um, um, Ivana, uh, do you want to come in there just on what your role is within the, this implementation of the strategy? Yeah, much like what Brenda was saying, I believe um, for students, I suppose, it's all about being at the table, um, I suppose. And, and I think my role is to ensure that, you know, whenever there are opportunities for me to engage in, to like, you know, participate in those opportunities, um, I think ENSA does a wonderful job of um, creating that space and that dialogue for students. and. Um, it's one thing to desire to be part of the table. It's another thing to actually you know, put yourself forward and just um, becoming part of that conversation. So I, I think also, it's also me spreading the word to also to other students, because um, I find sometimes people just aren't aware that some of these things are going on. Um, so a bit of creating a bit of hysteria, creating a bit of noise, letting people know what's going on and how they can get involved is, is key from my perspective. Karina? Yeah, I suppose just, uh, I suppose everybody does have a role to play in this and that's important. Um, certainly from our perspective, I think just reminding people that this is a national scheme. And what I mean by that is that it does involve all of the um, higher education colleges that are currently recognized as operating on the Irish landscape. And that includes our independent providers who are very active in this particular uh, program, which is fantastic. And that's actually quite important. I suppose the other role is just uh, to remind people that uh, we need to link up all of our student um, engagements and partnerships and efforts. So again, um, we would see that as part of our role, which is to ensure that all of the various efforts on feedback from students and I suppose any kind of engagements with students are linking into NSTEP uh, and they're working in partnership with each other and and very often I think we've we've tried to do that with some of our national conferences and we'll continue to do that that's really important uh, and then the other piece is just I suppose to to remind our um, international audience which is our international quality assurance and qualifications agencies abroad that we do have this Scheme and that we are interested in sharing that. Uh, that's an important part because there's always learning for NSTEP as well as, uh, you know, NSTEP engaging in other thematic um, aspects that are going on perhaps in other jurisdictions. 
And then the final one is to try and ensure that um, because we are, you know, an organization that goes across further and higher to ensure that any learning from the further education system, you know, can be linked in with NSTEP and likewise that NSTEP is available uh, to provide any uh, wisdom and advice to those that are trying to set up these types of programs and, and really important staff student partnerships uh, in on. Um, you know, I suppose uh, in further education more generally. The unique factor about NSTEP, which I, um, you know, people are sick of me saying, but it, it's such an important part. It's not just a student engagement piece, it's a student and staff engagement piece. And that's that's really where the value lies uh, in my view. Fantastic, I, I love that. And I think it's, it's absolutely reflective of the work that's been done. So I might go to you, um lastly just on this in, in at a local level um what is what is your role in the implementation of this uh yeah well, thanks Mary. well i suppose i mean as, as i was saying like this the, the importance of partnership i guess as kind of as a staff member as a member of committees as a member of kind of project teams and so on to be kind of a, an active advocate for not only for partnership with students as opposed to just kind of implementation without students or consultation with students, but full partnership. And I think that the, the key word additional to that is authentic. Um, I think for, for many, many, many years, we've seen what have been called consultations, either with students or staff or, or with kind of stakeholders elsewhere, where you start with the answer and then you go out and talk to people and then you come back and say, well, we asked and we're sticking with the answer we started with. Um, and I think that that's something that's changing as well at, at every level. Um, so yeah, I'm, my my role, I guess, my, my individual role is to be a, a, an advocate, a vocal advocate for authentic partnership. Fantastic, I think we'll all join you in, in that advocacy and the hope for that. So um, we're, we're coming up on time now, but I might very quickly um, ask each and every one of you if you if you could um, give us one, one or two sentences, a magic wand um, for how far the strategy will go um, for your experience in, in working in this program and, and the sector um, in, in future years by the end of 2025 with a magic wand, what would you like to see? Yeah, I, I might start there. Um, I, I would like to see just uh, the, the, the normalization of partnership um, that, you know, I mean, as I say, I was at a meeting yesterday and so, you know, we'll, we'll, we should probably consult with students that there's no question that every time a project team or a panel or a committee or anything is set up, it's not should we have students on it, it's who, who is the student representative on this, that it just becomes so normal. Um, so that's that's what, I, what I'd like to see. And I think definitely this strategy is a, a major leap in the right direction towards that. Yeah, I think that's a really good point, Lee. I think for me, it would be that normalization of the partnerships as well. And I think um, that this strategy goes a long way to will go a long way to, to achieving that. Um, and I also what I'd like to see is more discussion around student engagement amongst the senior management of higher education institutions, because I think we can see here today that we have uh, Lee and his colleagues, you know, across the institutions, huge advocates for the programme. But I think what will really embed it is if we could hear more of that dialogue from the presidents, the vice presidents and so on. And I think if we could achieve that by the end of this, um, by the end of this strategy, Oshin, you could take an early retirement maybe at that stage. <laughs> Fabulous. Um, anyone else? Just maybe one, one or two sentences. Um, magic wand. Mm. Anna? I would say maybe not having to ask ourselves the same questions that we're asking ourselves currently um i think in terms of like you know why aren't why 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 is there a very small percentage of students um participating in meetings that have the most amount of impact um why isn't senior management more involved when it comes to partnership why aren't we being listened to so all of these questions that plague us currently in 2022 I, I, I have high hopes that the strategy will 
either answer some of those, a lot of those questions or alleviate that and we only have to deal with those questions again. So that's, that's those are my final, my closing words. <laughs> Thanks so much, Akrita. Yeah, I think I, I couldn't disagree with what's been said already. I think, um, again, just Im embedding it more organically in the system. Um, I do think that people forget how actually difficult it is to get students engaged because uh, staff and students both have their own roles. Students have very busy lives. We can see with all the discussion around assessment and over assessment and, you know, doubling up on assessment and then the hybrid life, the COVID trying to do the part-time work. Uh, I can, I've seen it more clearly now than I have ever before because I have three in college and it is just chaotic. So I think any kind of program success at this level is just a fantastic achievement for everybody. And it's, as, as Lee and Vivian and uh, Brenda have said, it's really just to, to continue to embed it organically. Getting the, uh, the, the leaders involved, fantastic, but um, there is recognition there. We just, I think this strategy will help us just nail it down uh, and identify it more clearly. I think just Amid and just jumping in at Karina to finally um, to finish this off, I think that the importance of diversity in the student voice, not only um, I've seen like, for example, as being an international student, I feel amazed when I see other international students bringing their voice to the panel. And I know the challenge that comes as being an international student, but at the same time, I want to see other people that come from disadvantaged backgrounds and bringing their voice. You're not only representing a bubble, but rather a whole student, because it's not only me, you know, there are other student types out there. So I hope that the partnership would be trying to engage with different diversity of student body. And I think that would be great. And you would see that reflected in the culture because you would have different voices that haven't been heard before. Absolutely, which is so important. I think I think if all of our wishes come true, I think we'll be looking at a, a really quite a wonderful sector. Um, Celine, do you want to come in there? Thanks, Megan. Just to add to um, everybody else's contribution about embedding um, a culture of partnership, an authentic um, partnership across the higher education landscape. Um, but just to add also um, where we have pockets of excellence, so selective partnership to move towards a universal culture of partnership. And I think a key step in that journey is to introduce mechanisms across the higher education landscape where we value the contributions that students bring to the table. Um, and that can be done in, in lots of different ways, but they are bringing their unique expertise as learners, their unique perspectives as students. So maybe to open up the conversation around how we can value um, their unique um, expertise and contributions as well, as well. So thank you. Absolutely. Thank you so much. And I think that there's a, a lot of food for thought there. So um, thank you so, so much um, to all of our panelists. Thank you to uh, Karina, Vivian, Ivana, um, Mir, um, Brenda, and um, of course, Lee as well. So.